little bit about Israel. And, uh, you know, the, the estimates are that crowdfunding is a $100 billion industry within the next couple years. And I think that's the lowest estimate. Um, you know, it's only growing and it's not going away. So people need to pay attention, especially entrepreneurs and investors. Um, if you look at 10 years ago, the big market cap companies in the US were not tech companies. And today, they're all tech companies. So investors looking at what is the future, or even the present, uh, you can't ignore tech. It's important to diversify into tech, uh, and many investors just aren't aware of that, but uh, they only invest in public markets, and that's, that's a good idea. But if you look at this slide, if you want to get massive returns out of tech companies, you can't do it in public markets anymore. This is a slide from Adresen, um, Mark Adresen, Adresen Horowitz, one of the top VCs in Silicon Valley. And this shows that back in the day, as a private investor, you made a lot of returns, and as a public investor, you made a lot of returns. If you invested in Apple and Microsoft, Oracle, when they went public. So the blue is private, and I don't know what color that is, I'm colorblind, but the other color is, uh, what is it, gray? <laughs> the other color is public investors, and you can see public investors did really well in the old days. Now, companies are staying private. Look at Uber, look at Airbnb. I mean, obviously everyone, everyone is talking about IPOs, but by the time they go public, the returns are pretty much realized by the early investors. So the public investors are not going to see the same type of returns anymore. And this is why investors need to care about investing early, because investing in technology today is just not going to provide the returns that it used to, to provide back in the day. So even if you invested in the recent IPOs like Facebook and Twitter, nice returns maybe, two or three times, but it's no longer 600 and 1,000 times returns like some early investors. If there's one slide that is most important that you take away from today, this is it. So you can't talk about tech, innovation, investment without talking about Israel. Silicon Valley is the most developed ecosystem when it comes to innovation, and Israel is number two. And I'm not saying that. This is by the World Economic Forum. You look at every list of all the you know, most innovative countries, you'll see that Israel is on that list. Number two, one, three, depending on what category, but it's always on the top five. It's a tiny country, eight and a half million people. It's like a city in the US. Right? There's 8 million people in Manhattan every day, just to give you perspective. And the, the reason why this is important is because our crowd is based in Israel, and this is where we source a lot of our investments, a lot of a startup uh, deal flow. Venture capital investment hit a record high in the second quarter in general. This is uh, recent news, $70 billion. And in Israel, $3.2 billion in the, second in, the first half of in the second half of 2018. So we're on track in Israel to invest or to attract investment over $6 billion uh, in that little tiny country. And so, and by the way, the U.S. today is around $93 billion total in venture capital investment. So you can see that from 2013 to 2018, there's over 100% uh, growth in investment. Last year was $5.2 billion. And why is this happening? Because Israel is producing mega exits. The biggest one in Israel's history was Mobileye, bought by Intel, for 10% of Intel's market cap, $15.3 billion. You guys know Mobileye? It's in a, basically all luxury cars. It's a driver warning system, um, producing autonomous vehicles, essentially. One of the companies here, Argus, is one of our portfolio companies was a sold to uh, Continental, a German company, for about $430 million. And there's others, but now the Israeli entrepreneurs are much more patient. There's been, um, there's a very strong community of serial entrepreneurs who are building company after company. They have a lot more patience now because they made their wealth in the first or second exit, and now they're really, really focused on building large tech companies. In Israel, cybersecurity, autonomous vehicles, and uh, AI are the three top sectors attracting most capital, and that, that's because this, you can't ignore it. That's the, the trend. That's the, uh, the place that investors are putting the most money into. 
And Israelis are typically um, very, very, uh, they're, they're, you know, this is, this is the skill level that a lot of Israelis come with uh, out of the military. And, you know, this is something we could talk about for a long time. There's a book about it, The Startup Nation, highly recommend it. Documentaries, talk to me if you want to see uh, more resources. I'm not going to go through each company, but these are some of the companies that we're investing in, and maybe I'll show you at the end some videos. But it ranges from AI for seniors. Actually, this is, you know that a company is getting a lot of good press when it's in one of the tonight, uh, the, night, the late night shows. Um, check this out. Because seniors love technology. The new LDQ will help the elderly tech, FaceTime, and do other online activities as shown in their promotional video. LEQ reminds me to take my meds, arranges rides for me. She even reminds me of all my appointments. Mary, don't forget Grace with the Golden Girls at 1 p.m. Would you like to practice? Oh, I don't either. I didn't catch that. Do you want to play bridge or not? Oh, fine. <laughs> I said it's time for bridge practice. Don't upset me, Mary. It would be a shame if someone mixed up your meds. <laughs> this is an early investment we made in a company called uh, Intuition Robotics. Um, and this is deep artificial intelligence that acts as a companion to um, people who are you know, living alone. And there's more and more baby boomers and, and uh, senior, um, senior people who, are, who need a companion and to stay connected with the family. So uh, we're very excited about pre precision agriculture, Ag tech, a lot of opportunity there. Aerobotics is an autonomous drone for industrial use. Um, and EGBs, is, again, there's, there's so many different sectors to talk about, but I'm going to pick a few companies at the end um, to talk about more specifically. But what's our crowd? So what, what are we doing to bridge investment opportunities around the world? So here's an overview, and I'll explain in detail. All right, we'll skip this. So to date, we invested $750 million in 160 companies out of about 10,000 that we vetted. We have 22 exits. This is an updated, the latest exit, exit is not recorded here. And we also invest in funds. So we have 12 venture capital funds, 25,000 accredited investors around the world who we share our investments with. We also work with multinational corporations, so we've grown that community. And it's uh, truly global, over 150 countries. And so if you're a wealthy individual looking for investment opportunities in venture capital or technology, you have two options. You can call a big fund, the ones that are you know, doing well for many years, and hope that they take your phone call. And good luck with getting into the next fund, because they don't need you. They have big institutions that they've been working with for a long time. So individual investors basically can't invest in the best funds. It's just out of the question. So the other option is to be an angel investor. But then you have to rely on your own deal, deal flow, your own network, and your own expertise in doing due diligence, and your own negotiation and documentation. It's expensive. It's, it's very difficult to also know you're limited with the amount of deal flow that you have. So it's important to, to understand that even though you might find a great company, you, it's, it's not possible to, to understand the quality of the deal without understanding what's out there in the market. So we need a lot of deal flow. The name of the game in venture capital is deal flow, quality deal flow. Every VC will tell you that. But as an individual, you're pretty much limited to the deal flow that you can source. And some angel investors are professional at this, which is why they do well, but it's very, very difficult. So our crowd is a hybrid, the best of both worlds. It's professional due diligence and sourcing of deal flow with the flexibility of uh, angel investing. Minimum check is only $10,000 investment into directly in the company and into a venture fund, 50,000, which in venture cap, which may sound like a lot of money for individuals, but in venture capital, that's very, very low compared to institutions, right? And we handle the, everything 
from the deal flow, sourcing due diligence professionally by an investment team, negotiating the terms, institutional level terms, which pro provides uh, additional rights and, and uh, protection. And uh, we also sit on the boards and we, s we act as a professional venture capital firm. But we source capital from investors around the world into a single partnership. And then we write a single check to the company as one investor. And this is revolutionizing the world of venture capital in many ways. And accredited, accredited investors now can invest in companies and in funds that in the past were just completely out of their, um, out of their range without any access. So this is how it works. We look at thousands of companies. We evaluate them professionally every single year. We about, I would say about 200 a month. We research, select one to two percent of the best companies we believe in and find. We invest our own money. Why would you anybody invest if we're not investing? So we have a private investment vehicle which invests at least five percent in every deal that we like. We have skin in the game and then we share it to our network of investors, individual investors, family offices, institutions, and uh, corporations who are interested in innovation as well. So this is the model of our crowd, and it's very difficult to duplicate because it requires a lot of experience, a lot of uh, a big network, um, and for that reason, we're one of the largest, if not the largest, f uh, platform uh, in the world today. We also co-invest with leading venture funds. So this is just a few, but you name it, Kosla, Battery, uh, Sequoia, et cetera, we have investments in the same deals as them. And this is important because individuals typically cannot invest in deals that these big boys have invested in. But now, there's a way to access these investments. So that's the exciting part. Also, leading angel investors. And some of our partnerships of, around the world are with corporations looking for innovation. So we also act as scouts, as boots on the ground for them, um, and helping them identify innovative solutions in sectors of interest, autonomous vehicles. So Shell, for example, interested in energy solutions, uh, anything related to cars, etc. We have a very professional diligence process. I won't dive into it. It starts with 200 companies roughly a month, and it ends with three. Um, so we're very thorough. But unlike, and this is the beauty of what we do, this is not just about investing in companies. Unlike other platforms where you can just participate, we are actively managing investments and helping the companies throughout the life cycle. So we have a large team, we have a large network, and we help them identify business opportunities and other venture capital firms who wanna invest in future rounds and uh, sitting on boards and et cetera, et cetera. And this is the beauty of crowdfunding because we bring so much value add as investors. Today, entrepreneurs have great companies. They can pick their investors. So if you're an entrepreneur and you have a great company, you have no problem raising capital. But you want the best investor, not just the investor with a check, but investor who can open up doors and expand to new markets and connect to uh, you know, other uh, customers and partners and distri distributors, et cetera. And that's, that's the power of the crowd. We source all that expertise, connections, not just from the management team and the team at our crowd, which is you know, around the world, but also from our community of the 25,000 plus. And that is the power of the crowd. And that's how we win a lot of deals when we compete you know, for limited allocation against un other venture funds who want to get into the same uh, company. And so I think this is really the uh, differentiated model that our crowd brings to, uh, to equity crowdfunding. Some of our companies are all the top lists and press, um, cybersecurity cyber company, Zebra Medical Vision is artificial intelligence for radiology, so you know they can the software algorithms can identify patterns based on thousands of previously diagnosed records, and can essentially replace radiologists in the future or complement them. And so, don't train your kids to become radiologists now. I think in the future it's not going to be as relevant. Um, you know, it's, it, there's there's literally jobs that are going away because of uh, artificial intelligence, but it will create new ones. And I think Zebra Medical is one a good example. Here's um, other 
from uh, this from 2018 recently actually, and our crowd is number eight. So the, the innovation of equity crowdfunding is also uh, something that uh, people are paying attention to. We have, uh, this is a busy slide, this is our overall portfolio, 150 companies, 12 funds, and we're going to talk about each company and fund for the rest of the day. So, no, I'm kidding. But it's going to, this is what, this shows the diversification that uh, investors can have in their portfolio from um, cybersecurity, software, autonomous vehicles, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the flexibility that our crowd allows investors to have in building a diversified portfolio is, is really the beautiful thing about this, this um, business model. Also, the, uh, you know, we talked about funds. Global investments, we don't just invest in Israel, we invest wherever there's good deals and uh, it doesn't, you know, ge geography is less relevant. As long as it's a good company, we'll make the investment. So investors register, accredited investors can sign up and get access to the deal room for, to basically analyze the investment opportunity, to see the devaluation, to look at the business model, and we put together professional information, a professionally written memo about the different uh, the, the risks and, and the opportunity. Uh, it's very interesting. A lot of investors register for webinars with these companies. And um, I'm going to skip a few slides just to show you a couple of videos. These are some of the exits by multinational companies that bought our companies. This is very relevant for today with the ride sharing uh, economy booming. A jump was acquired by Uber recently. And, uh, you know, Uber is trying to become the Amazon for transportation. Um, and so there's a lot of press about this. But just as an example, investors who invested in Jump, we invested at $25 million pre-money valuation. Uber bought them for 200 And that was the, basically a year and a half. Uh, so that's a good example for how investors now benefit from early stage investing. We talked about this. Um, currently, we have a whole slew of incredible investments on the platform. You can check it out on our website. I want to show you a cool uh, company that's currently on the site. I'm just not sure I know how to play. And then we'll end with this. And if you'd like uh, additional information, I have a card. Our core technology is truly a That means drones are launched and landed automatically without the need for a pilot. Our system is easily operated by anyone from anywhere, and drone missions are deployed with the click of a button. We have refined the way drones are used and have turned them into a professional industrial tool. Sensor and battery swapping capabilities turn our drones into a multi-tool that brings unprecedented value across various applications. Not sure what happened there, but this is a company that created the first autonomous drone that can you can send on a mission for security, for detect, detecting leaks, for it's for stockpile measurements in, in mining facilities. Uh, incredible company. It's already operating, up and running, generating revenue. Um, there's a lot of great companies I'd love to show you about. We're out of time, so so what I'll do is send you the presentation if you're interested. Um, just want to. I'm going to end with. Yeah. This is what Parkinson's did. I'm going to end with Inside Tech. Um, this is a company that is already late stage but still private. And they're, they've created incredible technology for non invasive treatment. Um, and you, you'll see this is why we do what we do. It's not about just making money and you know, tech and all that. This is about helping people, you know, making an impact. And so this is what wakes me up every morning and gets me excited to get out of bed. Yeah. This is what Parkinson's disease does to Kimberly Splatter. Uncontrolled movements, shaking and wobbling. I got to the point where I was having difficulty getting dressed. I have a grandson. I couldn't like snap his onesies. I was at a wedding recently and I couldn't dance with my dad. What is that? Now, doctors at the University of Maryland Medical Center are experimenting with a brand new treatment, something that's never been done before. It's called MRI-guided ultrasound. It's been known for a long time that if you make lesions in certain parts of the brain, you can eliminate some of the uh, 
symptoms. And that's exactly what this treatment does, except there's no cutting and no surgery. Kimberly underwent this treatment less than a week ago. She says she had to shave her head, but the procedure didn't hurt. The only feeling is intense heat. The results, though, were immediate. She was able to walk. It was just absolutely the most incredible thing in the world. And when we met Kimberly this morning, there was even more emotion because she was able to accomplish something else, running a favorite hobby that she hasn't been able to do for years. It's turned back the clock for me. You know, I, I have a new lease on life. I can do things that I want to do. I, it, it's a blessing. So this is what I had planned for you uh, in, in a nutshell. Um, I'd love to expand more, but I'm out of time. So uh, thanks for coming. And if you want to learn more about investment opportunities, go to ourcrowd.com or email me at asher at ourcrowd.com. Thank you, guys. Would you like to take any questions before we leave? Sure. If there's any questions. Yeah. How was your general process for all the meeting companies to make an investment in private the process for diligence could take years because we might like a company but we might want to watch them for a while but it could also take two weeks if we see a great opportunity that we don't want to miss and we can expedite the diligence we can do that as well we have a very professional team so it all comes down to priority but I, th I think the average would be six to ten weeks um, we do it fairly quickly but it's highly professional and that's the feedback we get from all the companies and if you're an entrepreneur you'd like to be considered, um, then you can just go to rcrowd.com and apply as an entrepreneur and uh, send in information. Um, and I'm happy to also uh, receive uh, a deck from you and forward it to the investment team. I'm not part of the investment team, just to clarify. But uh, we do source deal flow from the crowd as well. So oftentimes we'll get an investment opportunity from an investor you know, who's out there and he, uh, they send us their early angel investing uh, companies. So we see a lot of companies and we like to see a lot of companies. That's how you, you know what's going on and the valuations and who's doing what. So I hope that helps. Yeah? How many on average investors are taking part in investing in companies? The average portfolio and investing in startups requires a portfolio. Otherwise, you're better off going to Vegas. If you're going to invest in one startup, that's not a good idea. Um, so t the portfolio should be 10 or 25 companies, uh, somewhere there. The average portfolio size is about 140,000 for individuals. We also invest with more institutional uh, investors and family offices, so that, that can range. I'm not sure the exact uh, number, but that's in the hundreds of thousands uh, for the portfolio, or perhaps even uh, over a million or so. And um, it, it's growing, because now we're investing in later stage companies, and those, uh, those are less of a risk because the companies are generating tens of millions of revenue already. So the reward also isn't expected to be you know, 10 and 20 times, maybe it's two to three times. But those, those uh, depending on how you slice and dice the, the stats, every investor has different portfolio, but the average is about 140, 150, if that, if that helps. The majority of your portfolio is at uh, early stage, like you're saying now you're so, we're sector and stage agnostic. We'll look at everything and we'll invest in any stage. Um, but uh, the, you know, the early stage um, is limited allocation, right? So we now have a fund dedicated for the very early stage, so it's easier for investors to diversify into early stage companies. If you, we just don't, there's not enough allocation for everybody. If it's a great company and they're only raising a million dollars, it's going to be a food fight, which happens a lot, by the way. We, we've closed rounds in 24 hours. <laughs> Um, because if it's a great company with very limited allocation, everybody wants to get in. But um, we try on average, we raise uh, the average round on, on the platform today also has grown to three to five million as opposed to, you know, just a million or two. So over time, we've also raised late stage uh, rounds at 10 and 20 million. So it depends on the, on the opportunity. How do you see that? Uh, in terms of, I imagine those that will raise through the platform, do you ever find that, that you have, you have uh, less allocation for your 
own funds in order to invest in present value, other funds that you represent in the Yeah, I mean, we, we do offer a number of funds, um, but the way we see it is, you know, it's, we want to offer a good selection of investment opportunities, and every investor has different criteria, and at the end of the day, we're investing in all the funds, and we, you know, we want to make it available to more people. We're all about democratizing the asset class, and so either way, we're either we're investing in our own funds or or other funds. We're still we're still investing, managing the invest the investment, and collect uh, fees, management fees, and carried interest like any other venture fund. So this, you know, if th there's no conflict there really. Any other questions? Thank you so much again. Have a great weekend. Thank you.